Happy Wednesday morning to you, Crosspoint. It's good to be with you once again. I trust that all is well with you and yours as you're out and about doing the Lord's work at work, perhaps on the way to work, at home, maybe sitting in a recliner. Either way, trust that all is well. I want to run a couple of things by you, and then this is our last week for the prayer focus that the Alliance is putting out. So the two things I want to run by you is, number one, I actually went around the church, tried to find a baby bottle, couldn't find one. I think that's a good sign. Uh, APS is giving away baby bottles, and you fill those bottles full of change, and then you return it uh, either to church or you can probably drop it by APS as well. <clears throat> if you don't have a baby bottle, just take an old plastic uh, water bottle and cut a hole or slot in it and pop your money in there and I'm sure they'll accept a lot of uh, uh, green backs as well. So that's the first thing. The other thing is, so we rolled out some new language two Sundays ago and I want to start unpacking that in the month of February. <clears throat> so what we'll be doing, our new vision statement is imitating Jesus and so we want to really start kind of leaning into that and the three areas in which we're going to do that is one, worship, two, equip, and three, engage. And so I'm going to unpack those three successively in the month of February, and then I want to do some cleanup work at the end so to start getting us thinking in the right kind of way. So here's the heads up. We'll be dealing with worship this coming Sunday, but come ready to do some breakout work. So we'll be pausing uh, systematically throughout the service to let you do some work either with your spouse or to troubleshoot and to strategize at an individual level on how to to do worship and we'll be talking about that but if that's going to be a priority for us and a practice for us moving forward then we need to know how to actually practice it not only at the corporate level but at the family level and then at the individual level and so we want to start setting up some rhythms and some ways of, of working that out. Otherwise, the you know saying that worship is a value and something that we're leaning into is just talk, which we don't want to do. So those are the two things. Uh, transition now. So in the Alliance, we have been, been going through now a prayer focus at the top of the year. 40 days, technically 42 days, but 40 days of focused prayer on given subjects and topics. So number of things that we focused on this week, the focus is on unreached people groups, unreached people groups. So the Joshua project is guesstimating, estimating that there are still about 4,000 people groups that have either little access to the gospel or else have no access to the gospel. So as we think through the unreached people groups, I mean, they, they, we do missions because the gospel needs to be preached and shared. And we believe that people are dying and going to hell. Like that's a very sobering thought, but that is true. And that's what the scriptures teach. And that's why we do missions. We do missions, says John Piper, because worship is not. And so we do missions to increase worshipers to uh, to the Lord. So 4,000 people groups, and not only that, but as you study church history and the migration of the gospel, in the providence of God, the gospel went east a little bit from Jerusalem. Somehow it didn't stick that well. It mainly went west and it went south. Uh, right now in North Africa, there's not a lot of gospel presence. At one time, there really was. So the gospel went kind of west. It went up through Europe. It, um, it hit the Americas, and it has hit South America. It has hit Africa, and it's now gone to China. China is exploding with Christianity, and there are so many believers in China. We probably don't even know how many, but the gospel is creeping its way back to Jerusalem, but it went west and now it's coming around. And so there are some Stan countries there, Kyrgyzstan, uh, Pakistan, and other countries where there's a strong Muslim presence and the gospel is outlawed. And so one of the things about the Alliance is that we focus on those areas where the gospel is not. We don't 
really pour a lot of resources into going where the gospel or where there's already a gospel presence. Not to say that we don't, but that's one of the strategic points that I've always appreciated about the Alliance is that we're focused on going where there's no gospel access. So again, not saying we don't pay attention to where the gospel already is. We do, but more attention is, is to where it's not. So I don't know in the providence of God. I do know Jesus said that the gospel has to be preached into all nations, and many missiologists interpret that to be uh, people groups, and then the end. And so a gospel witness has to go to every people group, and then like that's the end. And Paul also talks about there's an allotted amount of Gentiles, a number, if you will, or an amount. And once that amount has been reached, then the time of the Gentiles will conclude. But these are exciting things. But the focus is on unreached people groups. And so I want to encourage you to do one thing as a takeaway from this focus. And that point is I set my alarm uh, at 10.02 every day it goes off. And that's because in Luke's gospel, chapter 10, verse 2, Jesus says, pray, that is, we are to pray, that the Lord of the harvest would send forth laborers into the harvest. And so my alarm goes off every day at 10.02, and then I stop to pray what Jesus has commanded me to pray, namely that the Lord would send forth laborers out into the harvest. And I'll tell you what's been happening since I've started doing that with... Um, much greater regularity than I had before is that my mind is starting to shift towards sending people towards uh, the harvest. And even in my prayer, as I'm praying that the Lord would send forth laborers, I, I pray that he would send them forth out of cross point, that he would use us to send forth laborers into the end time harvest. But I also I pray that he would send forth laborers that are loyal to him, that are single-minded in their devotion, that don't get caught up in other things, but are very much focused on the harvest. So I want to encourage you to do that. Set your uh, alarm daily, 10.02, and it just takes a short prayer. Many times I'll be in meetings or I'm with people, and I just I pray quietly, sometimes out loud. But uh, often I'll just pray quietly in my own, own heart and mind, and it'll just be like a, a few seconds of prayer and sometimes not even that sometimes just the briefest of thoughts but i want to encourage you to do that because it's the un the unreached people groups that need to be reached and we want to throw resources towards that because this i know matthew 24 14 when that last people group gets reached then jesus is going to come back uh, that's what he said uh, it has to be preached unto all nations, and then the end is what he said. So anyway, um, that's the focus for this week is un unreached people groups. So I want to encourage us to pray into that. And uh, one practical way, again, is you can set your alarm 1002, and you can do that every day. So let me uh, go ahead and pronounce a blessing over you. Lord, bless you and keep you. Lord, make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Thank you, and we'll see you Sunday.